Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of ureteral mass. A 42 years old male patient came with gross hematuria and right flank pain. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here's the picture of the right kidney. You can see the right renal parenchymal ecogenicity is slightly increased. The pelvic cell system is moderately dilated, that is a tree-like dilatation. So we are expecting feature of obstruction distally. Here's the right kidney. You can see it is not enlarged yet. And the pelvic ulcer system shows tree-like dilatation, which goes in favor of moderate hydronephrosis. And the proximal ureter here, we can see it is dilated. So we have traced the ureter, though it is difficult in most of the cases, but here we easily could trace the ureter. Here on color Doppler, you can differentiate the vessel from the ureter. The ureteric lumen won't show any flow on Doppler. Here, the mid part, it is crossing the iliac vessels. In this part, the lumen looks quite hazy. Though the overlying intestinal loops make us confusion, we want to evaluate this part further. When we check the urinary bladder, there was no ureteric dilatation at the vesicoureteric junction. So we have used the linear transducer and with linear transducer, you can see this mid part that is the site of second ureteric constriction where it crosses the iliac vessels that you can see here on Doppler posteriorly. You can see this part is slightly dilated than the proximal part. So this part took our attention. It looks like there is something inside but we are not satisfied to make a diagnosis. Now what option you can use? If you are not a new member of my channel, then you know that in this type of situation, I love to use the transvaginal transducer for a transabdominal approach. So I've used the transvaginal transducer. I put some pressure and you can see there is a hypoechoic soft tissue mass noted at this dilated part of the ureteric lumen. I've tried to compress it, putting the pressure with the transducer and this part is not compressible. So this is a ureteral mass. Let's see on real time. Here you can see the meat part. You can see here now with a good resolution as I have already diagnosed it with TVS probe. This is the intact lumen. You can see it is dilated and aniquic. But in comparison to this part, the mid to distal dilated portion shows luminal hypoechogenic soft tissue mass. If I go more proximally, then I can see the dilated renal pelvis. Again, this is the internal iliac vessels and this is the dilated ureter with luminal mass. So this is a long segment mass and transitional cell carcinoma commonly affects the distal and mid ureter. Cellular diagnosis will be confirmed with histopathology. Here's a picture of the ureter. You can see the dilated portion with soft tissue mass. Let's see the linear transducer view. And you can see this is the hypoechoic soft tissue mass within the mid to distal ureteric lumen entered to the iliac vessel. Let's see some still pictures. This is the superficial view with linear transducer. And you can see some hazy echoes within the mid ureter. Here's another view with slightly magnifying the image and the mass is well evaluated here. I tried to compress but it was not compressible. Though transitional cell carcinoma are highly vascular but due to surrounding bowel movement you may not well see the vascularity within this small caliber lesion. Here's the left kidney. Ureteral masses may come bilaterally so we have checked the left kidney and it looks quite normal. There was no wall thickening or any other abnormality within the urinary bladder. The prostate gland also appears normal. There was no postvoidal residue after first voiding. 
So in summary, there is a hypoechoic intraluminal soft tissue mass noted in the mid to distal right ureter causing obstructive features that is the proximal hydroureter and moderate hydronephrosis, suggesting it as a case of ureteral mass. Now the take home message. Sometimes a transvaginal transducer can be used for the transabdominal approach to see superficial lesions better than the linear transducer. You can also put pressure focally and I found this approach is very comfortable if you are trying to look for appendix or even to evaluate a pregnant patient putting the transducer over the umbilicus. So in your practice, if you have got the transvaginal transducer, don't forget to have some practice. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.